Hi there. We're going to finish up with our sea turtle talk by talking about why we do the work that we do and what you can do, what anybody can do to help our sea turtles. When we do this work, it is really hard. It is really hot. It can be really sad, but it can also be absolutely amazing. We do this work because sea turtles are a very important component of our local ecosystem and because our actions are causing their decline. Researchers at FWC will analyze the data that's collected statewide. They will evaluate certain locations that are being impacted and they will make changes in those areas. Turtles can be negatively affected by beach renourishment projects, like this one. They can be impacted by seawalls like these. They can be impacted by these groins. The beach changes when we add construction to it and all of those changes impact our turtles. After years of compiling and analyzing data, laws have been enacted to protect the turtles during nesting season. In areas where these turtles nest, the homes, condos, and other beachfront properties must turn off their lights or replace the white light bulbs with turtle safe lights. Longer wavelengths like red or amber do not disturb the nesting mothers or the emerging hatchlings. The company that I work for, we only collect data to help provide information. Um, organizations like the Loggerhead Marine Life Center will collect their excavated and stranded hatchlings and monitor them for long periods of time. These were Hatchlings, this was one hatchling that I happened to find at a nest that had emerged. We don't take the hatchlings out of the wild. The company that I work for just collects the data. So unfortunately, we do see some unfortunate situations. Documenting nesting habits over the last few decades has given researchers a good idea of how the population numbers are doing. This was the state totals of the three nesting species we have here. Coretta, Coretta are the loggerheads. Our nests ranged over 100,000 lo loggerhead nests. These are non-nesting emergences. These are false crawls. So we do have a lot of those, but it means that we have a lot of nesting activity because some of those girls who lay nests don't lay a nest every time. So just because a false crawl happens doesn't mean she's not gonna come back in another day or two and try again. Chelonia mitis, that's our green nest and our green emergences. And then our leatherbacks are last here. Our numbers are going up every year. It's excellent because of the efforts of companies like mine, organizations like the Loggerhead Marine Life Center and countless others across the whole Sunshine State. We have watched the average numbers climb in recent years to the point that loggerhead sea turtles are no longer listed as endangered. Helping the sea turtles though, it begins with all of us. Okay, the first thing that you can do is listen to people like me who are out there, listen to other experts who go out there and take care of these turtles at Loggerhead or at other facilities around the area. Learn from people who've come before you and whose firsthand impact of, they see the firsthand impacts of our actions on wildlife. Uh, once a month or sorry, once a year, they hold a Florida Marine Turtle Permit Holders Meeting. I have attended these, they are amazing. I learn from people who work across the state, volunteers, researchers, they conduct research on sea turtle behavior, nesting patterns, anatomy, beach pest management to help with predators. They are bringing in county politicians who make sure that new coastal armoring and new uh, coastal construction is turtle friendly. In our homes though, we can learn lots of ways to reduce our impact on the turtles. First thing we can do is reduce our carbon footprint and use less and waste less. Another thing you can do is eliminate your single use plastics wherever you can. Myself, I no longer carry anything but my reusable cups and water bottles. I keep a Tervis, it's even got sea turtles on it. I don't buy shampoo anymore in bottles. I actually buy bars. I use Lush. They have tons of amazing stuff from face and face soaps, body soaps, hair soaps, and you buy them and bring them home in a little paper bag, not single use plastics. Another thing we can do is ditch the plastic straws. I know you hear enough about the plastic straws, but I wanted to bring up a couple examples of straws you can use. I put the hashtag here for glass drinking straws on Instagram 
they create handmade blown glass drinking straws. You can buy them, they last a long time. They come in a little pouch, they've got the little brush. You can also use a metal straw. I actually have one myself as well. Another thing we can do is reuse is reusable grocery bags, reusable produce bags. You can get these at any grocery store. People just give them away for free at the fair. I have so, I don't think I've ever bought a reusable grocery bag. The reason for that is because a lot of marine life comes into contact with our plastic and bags are a big problem out there. I took this picture several years ago on one of my morning surveys. On the right, this is a Portuguese man of war. It's like a cousin to the jellyfish. Sea turtles eat these. This is a plastic bag. Sea turtles also eat those, but they really shouldn't. It kills them. This is way too scary. I literally found this exact situation. I obviously collected the bag after I took my picture, but I knew this would serve as a good example someday. Sea turtles accidentally ingest plastic every single day, and a floating plastic bag looks a lot like a floating jellyfish, okay? Another thing people can do that they probably don't know they can do is when they visit their favorite coffee shop. A lot of coffee shops will allow you to bring a cup in with you so that you don't have to waste their plastic cups. Starbucks claims on their website that they serve about 4 billion drinks per year. Billion. That's a lot of single-use plastic that goes in the trash. The majority of these drinks come with three pieces of single-use plastic, the cup, the lid, and the straw. If you can eliminate even one of those, you're doing something better than you were doing yesterday. Another thing you can do is shop for local produce. Not only will you find fresher, locally grown, seasonally appropriate produce, but you'll also eliminate buying prepackaged fruits wrapped in plastic. Now, I do see some fruits wrapped in plastic here, and if I was making these choices, I probably wouldn't pick those raspberries. This is an excellent way to support your local economy as well as reducing your carbon footprint. You can avoid beauty products and cosmetics that contain microplastics. We are gonna talk about those on a different day. These tiny particles of plastic wash down your drain. And as Finding Nemo told us, all drains lead to the ocean. Not really, but you get my point. Eventually these microplastics end up in the food chain, in the sediment, and even clams and crabs are ending up with microplastics in their gut. Another thing you can obviously do is to reduce, reuse, and recycle. If you have to buy plastic bottles, reuse them for something. I've had to buy them for medications and things, and I reuse them for my animals at home to store things in. <sighs> now that we've talked about the things that you can do at home, let's stop outside the home and look at our coastlines. At the beginning of nesting season, I spent a few days before nesting was occurring at all and doing a small experiment. I found a big plastic crate and decided to collect all the trash I found over approximately two miles of beach, one of my survey mornings. This is what I brought back to my truck. All of that in that crate, because that was also washed up trash. I carried off almost 15 pounds of trash that day, most of it plastic between bottles, caps, straws. I found shoes, plastic silverware, nylon ropes, mylar balloons. I did it a second day. I came up with six full buckets of trash. I was able to find trash cans along the way. I dumped out my buckets, filled them again. Found more trash cans, dumped my buckets, filled them again. All in one day, the same beach that I was on the day before and collected 15 pounds. It was unbelievable. Our major oceans have great garbage patches and some of this comes in and washes up and that's what I was collecting. Other pieces and parts of this stay out in the environment for years, years. When you visit the beach, just remember to take some trash off the beach with you. It's not that hard. Beyond the beach, you can work on collecting trash even in your neighborhood. This was a music festival and this is what was left behind. You can make a difference in parking lots, in parks, in your school by removing trash that you come across. You can also get involved with organizations like Loggerhead Marine Life Center. You could get involved with Surfrider Foundation, Friends of Jupiter Beach. A lot of these organizations put on beach cleanups that you can obviously get into. 
Locally, you can volunteer with the Loggerhead Marine Life Center. They have all kinds of programs with summer camps, sea turtle rehab, education, working on the pier, and many more things. Gaining knowledge and experience through volunteering can be very beneficial long term. I understand that this is all hard. I understand that some people want to be out on the beach and there are many ways of getting out there, but doing what you can from home is a start. Okay, so at the end of the day, we are here for the turtles. This is what we do. We go out there, we take care of them. In order to ensure their survival, we as a species have to make changes. Now, we have to do better because they're worth it. These changes are difficult. They're outside of the norm. They push us out of our comfort zone. We have to make some adjustments. We have to do these things because they're necessary and they're possible. The changes that we've made so far are already working. The many turtles survive each year due to the combined efforts of people like you and people like me. We work for them. We sweat for them. We cry for them and we sacrifice for them. Okay. We live for them. Thank you.